a rainy day in the national capital. But uh, Prime Minister has set the tone. Hemant Atri ji, good morning. Varun Singh ji, good morning. And Tushar Gupta, namaste. Now, uh, the Prime Minister saying, voting 10 bhaje chalu hoti hai, aap 9.59 ko khade ho jaiye. Aur jaiye vote karke aiye. And then nikaliye apne kaam pe lag jaiye. So, this is very different, Hemant ji, from the attitude of the past, which said, 5 bhaje tak voting hai, jayenge aram se. No, no. See, Anand, in all the terms, in all aspects, Prime Minister has been opening the, rather he has been putting the new standards in place. The moment it was to be starting, he just made it a point that let him be the one of the first voters. That is his way of working it. Mm. And furthermore, if you see in past regime, uh, in his last, last eight years, what BJP MPs have been doing. Earlier also, earlier also, what happened to be there? Any ruling party was always known serious about the presence in BJP, particularly the MPs of the ruling class. Hmm. Now, what has happened? In every parliamentary party meeting, what he says, he only says one sentence, one liner, that you have to ensure your presence all the time. Hmm. So that is basically a change of culture as far as Mr. Modi is concerned. And he takes all the things very seriously. Hmm. And he wants to put it right away from his side. He is the first to start with that. Hmm. That is a good thing as far as democracy is concerned. Hmm. But, see, the other MPs also, hmm. if you see two, three days back, there was a, you know, discussion in the parliament going on in all right. this inflation and many things. The presence was very less. Hmm. Particularly, the opposition was asking for it. For, let's say, about two weeks, there was a pandonium in the parliament. Hmm. And during that discussion, there were only a few MPs. Even the quorum was, you know, hardly complete. Yeah. So the thing is, Parliament is a serious place for serious discussions, policy mm. framing and all that. And all these things which Prime Minister is trying to set in mm. should be taken care of by all parties, barring what their political differences are. That's yeah. a good thing that he starts with this. And no, all of see, whether all the opposition, see, uh, whatever PM Modi and this government proposes, the opposition has decided it will oppose. So, there, is, yeah. there, so that, that, clear, that is a clear uh, damage. But there is also about attitude and approach. Now, a lot of cases, what happens is because the Prime Minister is coming there, a lot of the MPs will also turn up. Because PM hai, uh, PM hai and its officers and all the MPs will sabki khabar rakhte hai, kaun aya, kaun nahi aya, and he doesn't say anything, but everybody knows that it's all being watched. So, you also no, have no, a lot of people who will get up and whip themselves up and say and say, because the monitor himself is standing first up. The captain is leading the team, so you have to follow. Everybody else has to be there. So that's also, but it's healthy. It's good to see that at least 100, 150 odd of the MPs are already present there, Varun Singh, right in the morning. Absolutely. And uh, as you rightly pointed out, the Prime Minister sets an example and he, is, he expects, or not expect, but everyone in the BJP is expected to follow him. Mm. When the Prime Minister, who is the most busiest person in this country right now, when he can be in the parliament at 9.50, 9.59, cast his vote, all the MPs and the ministers will follow mm. him. But you know, one thing I wanted to tell you about, there are few fights that you do on the streets mm. and few fights in the drawing room. Mm. The vice presidential election is something that you have to strategize and you have to be in your drawing room trying to get as many MPs in your favor. Mm. The Congress actually showed that it had almost already, uh, you know, conceded defeat. That is the reason yesterday, instead of being in their drawing room trying to contact as many MPs from the opposition side or from even from the BJP, which... Uh, you know, Madam Margaret Alva tried contacting him and Tabishwa Sharma, trying mm. to show that she's trying to reach everyone in spite of knowing that he's not a voter for her. You know, they yesterday were on the fields. I don't know where these MPs are. Mm. Uh, uh, we couldn't see any of them. I could see Manoj Kotak. I could see many Maharashtra MPs mm. queuing up, but I couldn't see a single Congress MP yet. Mm. So the, the strategy that they should have uh, chalked out yesterday in their drawing room, they were more busy on the streets, which actually has now backfired. So the mm. and TMC the way it has abstained on your in on your channel on day one when Jagdeep Dhankar's name was announced. I remember I was with Maharaj Shakil and I had told her and mm. I had this feeling that TMC in a way to support might not vote for Dhankar right. but will abstain and there's a lot of things happening behind Correct. which actually is visible now. Yes, so, so we'll get into that conversation in just a bit, but it is not just the NDA MPs. Even the opposition MPs are present there. I spotted a few left MPs and non-Congress uh, party MPs also present uh, within the opposition who are also there, disciplined and in time to cast their ballot and get out 
and uh, get busy with their uh, remaining work for the day on Saturday. So that is very healthy. So Hemant Atriji, what he said, as, as a practice for parliamentarians, there are also those. So everybody cannot be seen in the same prism. So be it government or opposition, there are many who, are, uh, who have come out and stepped up to cast their ballot right at the top. And let's say within the first half hour, let's stand in queue, finish off the voting, and then get back to our business uh, that we need to conduct as parliamentarians, as leaders, politicians, etc. Tushar Gupta is also there. So as we stay with these pictures, so one by one, that's MOS PMO, Dr. Jitendra Singh also casting the ballot. He was there along with Arjun Ram Meghwal and Prahla Joshi uh, uh, earlier on as, he, as they escorted the Prime Minister. He was the first to cast the ballot and set the process going. But Tushar, let's talk about Trinamool Congress. And also those... One by one, we'll get to it. We'll start with the Trinamool. Varun Singh says a lot of it is happening behind the scenes. Now, uh, it is all coming to the front, forefront. Uh, you had Mamata Banerjee meeting the Prime Minister, calling in on the Prime Minister before she met the pre President Draupadi Murmu. She was meeting the Prime Minister. What was that meeting all about? Then, more importantly, many said that the Trinamool Congress is abstaining from voting is because they want Jagdeep Dhankar off their back. So, the, one of the best ways to do it is uh, uh, either vote for him or not participate in the voting process because he's out of Bengal then, if he becomes a vice president. You know, Anand, this is a cricket match where the mm. results are pretty evident mm. even before the first ball has been bowled. Mm. We have the vice president. The numbers are pretty much inclined towards his victory, mm. which would be very evident by 5 p.m. this evening. Mm. But for the Trinamool, the larger point I want to make is mm. where is the opposition unity that we were promised? Mm. Mm. There were all the conspiracy theorists on the left saying Mamta Banerjee and mm. Sonia Gandhi mm. will come together. They will take on Amit Shah and Narendra Modi mm. ahead of the 2024 elections. Mm. I have had five states that went to elections earlier this year. I did mm. not see the unity. I had the presidential elections. No unity. Mm. Now the vice presidential elections. They can't even get together on the candidate. This was one litmus test the opposition had to pass. And Varun has rightly points out the Congress should have been working together on getting the MPs under its umbrella rather than crowding the streets, rather than fighting the Delhi police. Mm. But today, the Congress has no MPs. It has no standing when it comes to the presidential and the vice presidential elections. So my big question is, where is the opposition unity that we were promised? Mm. If these parties, to begin with Congress and TMC, the two major parties in the opposition, mm. followed by, say, the Samajwadi or the Shiv Sena faction, whatever is left of it, or the parties from South, mm. where are the parties going to find the middle ground if they can't even do it in the presidential and the vice presidential elections? Yeah. How can we expect them to come at a seat-sharing formula in 2024? For me, this was a litmus test for 24. The opposition has failed. Hmm. Opposition has failed. But, uh, uh, but Hemant Atri, the opposition has also done a seesaw, swung away. Some who backed Draupadi Murmu are now backing Margaret Alva. So they are also playing a balancing equation. How much of the ED crackdown is having an impact on who's voting where? See, Anand, whatever is happening here is the most unfortunate part, as Mr. Tushar Gupta was pointing out, I fully agree with him. The way, the non-serious way possible on this presidential and uh, no, no, vice presidential election possible, the opposition.